So I've got this Corsair SF450 power supply. I actually bought it ages ago thinking it was an ATX power supply and it wasn't, and I never actually sent it back. So I think I used it for about five minutes. It does actually work. I've got an old computer that I put it in. Quite a nice power supply. It's really compact, really small, uh, but it produces the same voltages that the Amiga needs. So I thought I'd take my um, the dead Amiga power supply that I've got and I'd convert, well, salvage the cable off it and convert this thing into an, a really, really expensive Amiga power supply with total overkill. From the looks of this, its max load on 5 volts is 20 amps and on the plus 12 volts rail it's 37.5 amps and on the minus 12 volt rail it's 0.3 amps. So this is massive amounts of overkill for what uh, an Amiga power supply needs, which if I just have a look, says output 5 volts needs 3 amps. What did we have? 5 volts, we've got 20 amps, nice. Um, the 12 volt rail needs 500 milliamps. Uh, we can do 37 amps, 37 and a half amps, holy cow. And the minus 12 volt rail needs 100 milliamps and we can do 300 milliamps. So I'm gonna use it, but yeah, I wouldn't advise this because these are reasonably expensive. This is the 24 pin ATX power connector. Uh, even though it's not an ATX power supply, it does have ATX outputs on it. So this is the ATX power connector that comes with it, which these two things will plug into the modular part of the power supply. And I've got this like two pound um, ATX connector, which will fit on here, I think. So yeah, so if I connect that to there, then I can cut this up and uh, basically just wire the uh, salvaged Amiga power supply cord onto this. This green wire uh, needs to be wired up to ground because that's ATX's way of turning the like the soft power on for the computer. Is it, um, when it grounds that wire, it means you're telling the computer to turn on. But because the Amiga doesn't have that, the Amiga just had a clunking power switch like the one we've got on this power supply. I need that to just be on, so I'll have to just wire that to one of the ground wires and just need to wire the rest into the 5 volts, plus 12 and minus 12 volts and should have a really super expensive super overkill Amiga power supply, but I'm pretty sure it will be very, very reliable. This is the dead Amiga 600 power supply. It actually says Amiga, well it says A300 on the back, but I believe that was the original name for the A600 before they changed it, because they thought if people thought uh, it had a lower number than the A500, they think it was a worse computer, but it was actually, I suppose it was better one because it did all the same things, but it was smaller. And there's the power connector, which I'm going to salvage the cable, basically. I, I don't really know if you can buy these connectors. You probably can. It's probably a standard connector. But I'd need the cable as well. And the power supply is dead anyway, so I might as well just salvage the cable and not spend any more money considering the amount of overkill on the actual power supply that's being basically being spent. So yes, you can blow yourself up on these even when they're not plugged in because they have large capacitors in them that can store charge. So I am going to be very careful. It is powered down. Right. Ooh, there it is in all its glory. Right, I just want the cable. Which one is it? It's this one. Can get this out? Uh, I might just snip these then. Wow, what's going on in there? Is that normal? I'm going to say goodbye to these cables. There we go, get rid of this thing. And we have a salvaged cable. So I've stripped the wires on those things now. Black wire is, I think it's ground. Yep, yeah, it's ground. And the red wire, I would say is gonna be plus five volts, let's guess. Yep. Yeah. And the white wire is, is that plus 12 volts? Nope. It's, it's minus 12 volts. Uh, and the yellow wire is, that's the shield. Yellow eyes, the shield. That just leaves the brown, which should be plus 12 volts. Yep. 
So the next thing to do is to dissect this connector and get together all the cables that I need. I believe the three orange ones are 3.3 volts and we don't need those. I'm gonna cut them all anyway, but we'll just get them all together. Next, we've got the blue wire is minus 12 volts. We do need that one. These next two blacks are ground. Gonna need those. This little thin green one is the sense line for the power on. So we're gonna have to connect that to ground in a bit. So we do need that one. We've got a red lead that's plus five volts. I am just checking them as I go in case this has got some dodgy colors on it or something like that, who knows. Two more commons. Uh, next two are another plus five volts and another common. Two more commons. A power OK line and minus five volts. So we don't need the minus five volts. So we've then got a plus five volts SB and another plus five volts. So the SB is standby voltage, so I believe that's always powered. Um, which must be the power the computer needs to actually do the soft power on properly. And last two is another plus five volts and the plus 12 volts that we do need. So there we go, so we've got to wire this up to the salvage cable. So I've stripped all the wires that I need um, and I've left all the ones that we don't, like the 3.3 volts and some other ones. Right, so I'm going to solder these five volt plus five volt wires together. Right, so it's pretty ugly, but I've soldered a bunch of those cables together. Right, so this is super janky, but I've soldered the correct leads together, hopefully. Uh, I've left some of the grounds floating, and I'm going to connect this power on, ATX power on, to one of those grounds. And there's a bunch of other just stuff that I don't need. So it looks super janky, but maybe if I fix that up, this should, in theory, work. I've taped them all up, and I've just got these commons floating in this power on thing, so I should just be able to boop, power it on with the uh, with this janky thing here. There we have it. My God, what a monster. Just to turn all that into that. <laughs> in theory, this doesn't blow up, we think. Don't know if it'll power up without a, without something to drive it though. That's on. And if I just connect these two pins, it's supposed to start up. Oh, no, it doesn't want to start. It had a go then. I don't think there's any load on it, so it doesn't start. Yeah, it's having a go. Right, so I've got a hard drive that says uh, bad on it. So this hopefully this powers up. This is just to get it so it's got something it can power. This power supply is just mega overkill because it can just do so much. So if I connect this ground pin, is it going to start? Nope. Oh, I heard the hard drive power up then. Oh, so maybe it is switching on. It's just the fan's not coming on. Yeah, there it is. Ooh, that sounds bad, that hard drive. I mean, it does say bad on it. So now the question is, let's see if the five volt works. So I'm getting on the five volt rail, 5.025 volts. That is awesome. That is better than the Amiga power supply. Um, and minus 12 volts is minus 12.02. Ooh, this is a good power supply. Ooh, nearly shorted it then. Oh, I think it did short it. Oh, that hard drive's terrible. So, plus 12 volt rail. Try not to short it this time. 11.9. It's not quite, not quite 12. The other ones are bang on. So that is a good power supply. I just need to sort out all this janky cableness and then I've got a really expensive Amiga power supply. <laughs>